Hi there, it's Jim from Janku, and today I want to take a look at the this keyword in JavaScript. Now, this really just refers to an object that is calling a function. So you can think about this in a couple different ways. For instance, say you are in a car and you're traveling with a friend and your friend says, can you turn down the radio? And you say, which radio? And they say, this radio. And they're referring to the radio that's within the car. Now, say a couple minutes later, you go to your favorite cafe and you get out and you go into the store and your friend says, oh, I love the song on this radio. And you know what radio they're talking about. They're not talking about the radio in the car anymore. They're talking about the radio in the coffee shop. So that is how you can think conceptually about the, this keyword. But I think the easiest way to demonstrate how it works is actually to hop into a browser and start taking a look. So I'm going to open up Firefox here. And then I'm going to press Control Shift K to open up my console. And then I'm going to bump up the size of this a little bit. And I'll just expand this so we can start playing around. Now, the, this keyword in the context of a browser refers to the window object. Now, the window is the representation of this whole browser. It's bigger than just the document, which would be your HTML here. It actually has some larger functions that correspond to the browser itself. So if I were to type this into my console here, you see we get this window object returned. Now, this window object contains a lot of things that we're not going to cover in detail in this video, but this is what the representation is. Now, you can get the same exact object by typing the window object directly. So these refer to the same thing in this context, which is the whole browser here. So let's define a function here to demonstrate this in a little more detail. So I'm going to create a function, and I'm going to just call this testo. And inside testo, I'm just going to console dot log this. Now, if I were to call testo, you can see it still refers to the window object here. Now, why is that? Another way you can write this call of this function of testo here, this is how you're probably used to writing it when you're writing JavaScript, but you could actually call it by running window.testo as well. And this does the same thing. So testo actually is a function that belongs to the window object. So we're calling testo on this object. So window is the object that is executing this function. Now let's show this in a little bit different of a context. Let's define a JavaScript object here and we'll call it cat. And this cat has four legs, so we'll say legs four. And the cat has fur color of brown. And then let's define a function here called what is this. And in here, we'll console.log this. And then let's just finish our object here and press enter. Okay, so if we were to come in here and now we were to run cat dot what is this, you'll see that this object return is no longer the window object. So that's because we are now within the context of this cat object, and the cat is the actual thing that's calling the what is this function. Now you can see that the object is what is to the left of the dot notation of where the function is invoked. Now, something interesting here will happen if we start nesting functions just based on the way that scoping works in JavaScript and how JavaScript assigns ownership of the object to a function. So let's demonstrate that. I'm going to go back up to the initial definition of the cat. And this time I'm going to add a new function within what is this and we can call this function now. So what is this now? And inside here, we'll console.log this. And then let's just make sure that we actually invoke this function here. So we'll call the now function. And so now instead of running the console.log inside the what is this function, we have nested it in another layer called the now function, and then we did the console.log. So let's press enter to redefine this cat variable. 
And now let's run cat dot what is this one more time. And you'll notice that we're back to the window object. So what is actually happening here? Let's take a look. Previously, when we were calling the what is this function, we were logging the this variable at that level. Now that function is calling another function which does not belong to the cat object. So this function now, and you can tell it doesn't belong to the cat object because nowhere in here are we doing cat.now to actually call it. This what is this function belongs, we're calling it from the cat object, but this one belongs to the scope of the browser, which is that window object. And that is why we're getting the this keyword coming back with the window object value here. So that's a quick intro to how the this keyword works in the browser. Now I'm going to switch over to my local code editor so we can look at how this works in node because it's similar, but it has a little bit of nuanced difference to it. Let's open up VS Codium and let's create a new file and save this file as this dot JavaScript on my desktop. We'll save that. So in node, if we were to write the this keyword and let's just console dot log this to the screen. So I'll save that and I'll come down here, make sure that I'm on my desktop so I can run this and then I'll run it with node. You'll notice that we get this empty object here. So that empty object in this context actually corresponds to module dot exports. If I were to save that, you'll see the exact same thing. So what are module exports? The purpose of this video is not to cover that in great detail, but let me just go over it real quick so we can all stay on the same page here. With module exports, you can actually share things across different files. So let's go and create a new file real quick. So I'm going to say new file, and let's just save this file as exports.js. And we'll save that on our desktop. And if we come in here, we can write module dot exports and then we can export a new message so we'll say my new message here and let's just set that to a string of hello world and then let's save that and then over here in our previous file we can come up here and we could make a new constant variable we'll just call this message and we'll require the exports.js file that we just created. And then in here, we can actually call my new message from the new constant we just created. So message.my new message. And if we save that, you see that we have hello world here. So we shared the information from this file here. We created this, assigned it to hello world, and then we used it over here in this file. So let's go back to our original example here. Let's get rid of this and let's go back to our modules export here and let's demonstrate adding to this object real quick so we could come in here and we could write a new module export and we'll just say testo And then let's log this one more time down here and save this and let's run this file. So you see we have a blank object here and then we have the testo high afterwards. Now if we were to come up here and we were to log this keyword up here and below, we would end up with the same values. So let's save it. Let's come back down here. Let's run this you can see we get the exact same thing. Okay, hopefully you're still with me. Let's go through a couple examples going back to what we talked about at the beginning of the video to demonstrate how this works within the context of the car and the cafe example we used previously. So let's get rid of all this. And let's start by defining a new class and we'll call this car. And let's create another class down here and let's call this cafe. Now, if you're not too familiar with JavaScript classes, if you wanted to pass something 
into this class when you're instantiating it, you would use something called the constructor method here. And let's just say that the constructor takes a make and a model. Those are just car terms. So for instance, a make would be a Honda and a model would be a Civic. And then we can use the this word to say this dot make equals make. And then this dot model equals model. Now what we're really doing here is when we create a new car and I'll show you how to do that in just a second, we'll be passing values from the outside world into this class and those will be coming in as arguments to this constructor. And then we'll be assigning those arguments over here on the right hand side to the actual object over here on the left hand side. And that way we could use that throughout the rest of our class if we wanted to. Now let's come in here and let's set a method here. And now a method is just a function that is appearing within our class. And let's call our method radio. And then inside radio, let's just console.log the this keyword here. And let's save that. And so if I were to come down here at the bottom, and if I were to make a variable here called my car, and I were to set this equal to a new car, and we're going to do a new instance of the car type. So let's create our new car and let's pass in the make in the model here. So we're going to say this is a Honda Civic. And then once we have our new car, I can call my car and I can call the radio method on it. And that should console.log the this keyword here. So let's come in here and let's run this. So you can see here that this is referring to the car object with a make of Honda and model of Civic. So it's referring to this object here. And it's no longer referring to the module exports. Now we could similarly come in here to our cafe class and we could do the same thing. So we could copy this scaffolding here. I'm just going to paste it in here. But instead of a make and model, maybe we have coffee and donuts. And then we'll change this and this as well. And we have the radio in our cafe as well. But if we save this, we come back down here and let's create a new instantiation of our cafe. So we're going to say my fave cafe. And we're going to create a new cafe object. And we'll say the coffee is hot and the donuts are tasty. And then if we came down here and we were to change this from my car radio to my fave cafe radio and save this, you notice now that the this keyword here is referring to the cafe and it's no longer referring to the car. So we've changed the context of where we're calling this from. But there's some nuance to how this actually behaves in Node. So let's come over here and let's just show what happens if I were to create our cat object one more time. And we said legs were four, fur color is brown. And then what is this? And we log are this keyword here and save that. Now, if we were to come down here and let's just comment out the other console at logging here and let's run cat dot what is this. We expect to get the cat object and we will. So let's just save this, come down here and run this. But if we come back up here and we run our previous example where we add a new function called now and we log the this keyword inside now and we call that function here. Let's invoke it here. 
If we save this, if this is an analogous to how we were doing it in the browser, you'd expect that this would go back to the module.exports object, kind of similar how we went back to the window object. Now something different is actually going to happen here, so let's just take a look. If I run this now, you'll notice that this object here refers to the global object. So it's the same thing as if we were to come in here and we were to run console.log on the global object. And let's just comment this out so we know what we're getting. Save that, come in here, and if I run this, you'll see we get that same global object here. Now, this is happening not based on where the functions are defined, it's based on how they're called. So the this value is determined where it's invoked, in these cases here, and not where it's actually defined, which is up here. And Node actually wraps your module code into functions, and we would really have to dive deep into the internals of how Node works to understand that full process. But for now, let's just suffice it to say that if you are calling this from within a function, like this, like a standard function here, it is going to go to the Node object. It's the same as if we were to call it like this. We'll create a new function here, and we'll call this testo and we'll log this here and now instead of calling this global variable down here let's just run testo and we're getting this same global object here so that's a brief overview of how the, this keyword works in JavaScript Hopefully this was helpful in clearing up some of the confusing parts of using it and why it behaves slightly differently in the different contexts that you're using it in. If you have any questions, please comment below in the video. And if there are other topics in JavaScript that you'd like us to cover, please comment below as well. And we'll try to get through some of those. All right, thanks for watching. And until next time, we'll see you.